Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you all for being here. We are watching the numbers closely to see if the recent mask and vaccine mandates have had the impact we hope to see on case rates, hospitalizations, and vaccination rates. If the mask mandate is going to work, we should see a leveling off of infections in the next few days. We've already seen a small increase in vaccination since the vaccine mandates were announced and are hoping that the recent full FDA approval for the Pfizer vaccine will add to that increase in the days and weeks to come. That good news on increasing vaccinations means that Philadelphia will likely hit 80% of adults vaccinated with at least one dose and 65% of adults fully vaccinated by the end of this week. But for the first time in months, more than 200 people are in Philadelphia hospitals with COVID. Even with our high vaccination rates, too many Philadelphians remain at risk. I'm hearing from many parents who are very worried about their children as they look forward to the start of school next week and as we all hear about surging rates of pediatric hospitalizations around the country. So I wanted to take a few minutes to update you on the public health science of what is needed to get our city's children back to school safely and to keep them safe during this difficult time. Essentially, when we have a population that is vulnerable and cannot be vaccinated, we need to wrap that population in layers of protective strategies. No single strategy is perfectly protective, but the combination works well to reduce risk. This summer, I've met weekly with our school and camp team leader to understand where cases are happening and where our layers of safety have broken down. Time and again, the answer is at home. We see this in our overall data for the city as well. Two thirds of people diagnosed with COVID who know where they were infected were exposed in their own homes by family members, friends, and other visitors. Why? Because home is where we let our guard down. We don't mask and we don't keep distance. Vaccines are clearly our best weapon against infection. Although children under 12 can't be vaccinated, the people around them can and should be. Vaccines can also protect teachers and other school staff against infection and prevent them from inadvertently passing COVID infection onto the children in their care. So I'm grateful for the actions of the school district and the school board in passing a vaccine mandate for teachers and other school staff last night. That doesn't mean that vaccines are all we need to do though. We know that no vaccine is perfect and that includes the vaccines against COVID. Masking over the nose and mouth, not hanging under the nose or chin. Hand washing, distancing, keeping people who are sick at home and contact tracing are all critical layers of protection we need to wrap around our children to keep them learning and in school. We're very familiar with those layers, but too often we ignore them. This fall, everyone in our schools, vaccinated or not, will need to mask. And I'm grateful also for the announcement this morning from the Archdiocese on masking in the Archdiocese and schools. Parents will need to commit to keeping sick children at home and getting them tested for COVID, even when that is challenging with work and other commitments. That is how we help to protect each other. The health department is here to help make those tests easy to get and to offer free testing. Our phila.gov slash testing site offers many options for testing around the city and can be filtered for pediatric sites. Distance remains important, but we know that our schools cannot open fully with six feet or even three feet of distance between every child. That makes all of the other layers of protection even more important. Some children have medical reasons that they cannot wear a mask. We will need additional layers of protection around those children to help keep them safe. None of this will be easy. And we know that even with the school's best efforts, there will be cases of COVID among students and teachers and there will be closures of classrooms, grades, even entire schools. But by committing to layering protections around our students and around the staff who teach and care for them, we can minimize those cases and maximize the amount of time that students are in school, learning, and returning to at least a semblance of normal. Thank you.